So, will Indian football have its own Manchester City? We'll figure out very, very soon. Hi, I'm Angus Sharma. You're watching Super Football, the home of Indian football fans. Welcome to Half Folly. Let's get straight into VAR, aka very articulate review of the week. City Football Group is planning to acquire a club in India. Well, this was a long time coming. If you do not know what City Football Group is, where the hell have you been? But anyway, I'm not judging you. If you do not know who City Football Group is, these are the clubs that they own. Manchester City from the Premier League, New York City in the MLS, Melbourne City in A-League, Yokohama Marinos in Japan, Club Atletico Torque in Uruguay, FC Chirona in Spain. And if rumours are to be believed, Mumbai City uh, in India? Well, I'm just picking off the rumours, nothing confirmed yet, don't take my word. Man City Chief Executive Ferran Soriano has come out and said that uh, that the intention to invest in India has been there for a long time, for, for probably two years according to him. But he feels like this is the right time and City Football Group as a group also wants to invest all around the world and their long-term vision involves India. I think this is great for everyone. Now, guys, right away, over to you. Which club do you think City Football Group should invest in? Take all your football knowledge and cram it into your comments and the best ones will be featured in next week's episode. You also made a graphic on this one. Uh, we're going to talk about those comments on social heat map. It's going to be interesting. AFF have been in the news for a lot of wrong reasons lately, but this, I believe, is a good one. So they submitted a strategic four-year plan to FIFA, which is going to track the growth of the sport in this country for the next 25 years. Well, that's at least the hope. The strategic plan that they've submitted is in line with the FIFA Forward Program, who provides funding to member associations for the key areas of development that they propose in their own plans. To boil it down for you guys, it's pretty simple. AIFF tells, this is where we want to put the money. FIFA says, okay, sounds good, we're going to give you the money. So yeah, the plan needs to be spot on. So the seven key points I have submitted in the plan are as follows. Competition-oriented development, pursue excellence, go local, infrastructure, broad basing of the game, more opportunities for women, and use of technology to fast-track growth. Right, so a lot of this might just go over the head for example, Pursue Excellence, I mean, isn't that fairly obvious? Competition-oriented development, I think, is about the ISL and I-League. Infrastructure, again, the unspoken truth of Indian football, not up to the mark. Broad basing of the game, not really sure what that means. Maybe spreading the game across in states where game hasn't really grown. More opportunities for women needs to happen in Indian football. We have done a good job with IWL, but it's, let's keep going. User technology to fast-track growth, again, something that needs to go with football development all across the world, just not India. Now, I know a lot of this sounds vague and a lot of Indian football fans who have not been a fan of AIFF lately will bash them for this as well. But I think we should be a little patient. Maybe this will give us a good ISLI league merger, an ideal league format. Maybe things will look bright at the end of all of this. India's Under-17 World Cup striker Anike Chadha is set to become the first Indian player to train in England as he joins the Blackburn Rovers Academy for a three-month stint, joining from Jamshedpur FC. So, Anike is going to turn 20 in July, so he's still a very, very young guy, so I'm really happy for him. How the move came through is a bit of a mystery, but then Venkis is an Indian company, they own Blackburn Rovers, maybe the Indian Connect work, some business connections, or maybe they actually saw real talent in Anike. Still a bit of a mystery, but got to be happy for the young guy. He can make a lot of difference given the fact that he's a really pacey player up front and we anyway, haven't had great strikers uh, for a really long time. So guys, over to you. Which Indian player do you want to see either sign or train for a European club? Leave it in the comments down below. You can use all your favorism. It's all okay with me. Right guys, this section of the show is called Social Heat Map. This is where I take the best of your comments made on SPF. So last week I asked you about your ideal league system in India once ISN and I League merges at the end of the season. So, a lot of really good comments on last week's episode. I'm going to take a few now. Richard Chakrabarty says, I have two things to say. Won't be a bad idea to give the national team job to Derek or Bibiano, that's an Indian coach, uh, if Roca or Lopera is unavailable. He strongly supports a coach who has a philosophy and not a certain frame of mind unlike British coaches. Second, it would be the best if we have a 16-team league Top tier 8 plus 8 promotion and relegation with second division consisting of 20 teams, then a third division. Rishabh, I'm going to answer your comment in two parts. Number one, an Indian coach. I would love to see an Indian coach in the national team. But 
as an assistant coach, not managing the main team. Second, 8 plus 8 sounds good to me. My ideal scenario would be, since ISL clubs are still immune to relegation, let them be, add six more clubs from the I-League, just like you said, and still keep promotion relegation for the two bottom teams, which is just I-League teams. This one from Shashwat Talukdar is also pretty interesting. As for ASC, one nation, one theory, I think you're talking about one league here, should be the mantra. There should be a top league, a second division, and a third division, and so on. By this way, many players will emerge. The number of unemployed players will reduce. ACA licensed coaches will increase, maybe. The entry fee should be cut off for all the I-League clubs as they have served in football when there was no ISL. So, Shashwat, I think your comment is pretty interesting and weirdly makes sense. But I don't know how the unemployment in players will go down because of the merger. It will happen or will not happen. I mean, the number of teams essentially still remains the same. There will have to be a big change in the system, uh, an increase in the number of teams for the unemployment in players to at least go down a little. But the part that I did like is uh, the franchise fee. I-League clubs cannot pay the franchise fee. It's too expensive. Maybe an East Bengal or a Mohan Bagan, even Mohan Bagan are struggling right now. So how can uh, the likes of ISL FC and Shillong Lojong who are anyway going out be expected to pay a 15 crore or even more of a franchise fee? I think that should be get rid of. So, like I said, we made a graphic post about Man City's investment in India, the potential investment in India, and you guys made a lot of comments on that one, and a few ones really caught my eye. This one from Zidane Patni says, Hope it's FC Pune City. They could definitely do with some Arab oil money. Banter, maybe you are a Mumbai fan, Siddhant, I'm not sure. But yeah, FC Pune City desperately need money right now. And no one better than Man City, or should I say City Football Group, to provide them with that money. But for City Football Group, is it the right decision? Maybe not so much. They probably will look for a team that has a strong fan base, has good football loyalty, and gives a good return on investment as well. FC Pune City, as of now, maybe not so much. This one from France Nicholas really impressed me. It would be awesome if they invested in Mohan Bagan. No offence Mumbai cars, but I'm sorry to say, football lovers in Mumbai don't support their own club. I just don't see the point. Investing in KBFC would still make more sense because there are people who are interested in Indian football. France, perfect comment. Mohan Bagan is a club that absolutely deserves to be in the top tier of Indian football absolutely deserves top-class investment because it's kept Indian football spirit alive for century, for over a century now. So, yeah, definitely Mohan Bagan for me. Kerala Blasters, not a bad shot at all. Again, like I said, great fan base that deserves good investment. Right, this section of the show is called Pseudo Pandit, where we feature the Indian football posts that impressed us the most. Good tongue twister, you should try it. This one from Sagar is really funny. Ranjit Bajaj has been flooded with many requests lately by East Bengal fans, but this one caught his attention. This fan says that if Minerva beats Chennai, he's going to name his baby boy after Ranjit Bajaj. Whew, that's some football love. So, just in case you guys do not know, you pretty much always do, but Chennai and East Bengal right now separate by exactly one point, and the games remaining in I-League is also exactly one. So, if Minerva beat Chennai in their last game, and East Bengal beat Gokulam in their last game, Minerva is ideally going to just hand over the trophy to East Bengal. So that is why this East Bengal fan wants to name his son after Ranjit Bajaj if this ideal case scenario for him happens. Only in Indian football. Next one is from SC Pune City. This one, uh, well, in hindsight is very funny. So some publication posted an article uh, spreading rumours that SC Pune City is going to release their foreign players for the upcoming Super Cup because of the obvious financial struggles that they're going through. And then FC Pune City tweeted replying, this is to clarify that FC Pune City is not releasing any of its signed players and we shall be participating in the upcoming Hero Super Cup. So this is what it has come down to for FC Pune City. A club that probably signed the best foreign players this season, they are struggling really badly with some financial restrictions right now. Will the club even be in existence next season is a bit of a question. Now, listen, personally, as you guys already know, I'm a, I'm a pretty neutral guy when it comes to Indian football. I don't have a club that I support. But Pune is, uh, is a place that has produced some of the best footballing talent. It is a proper footballing place, in my opinion, and I would love to see a football club remain in a city like that. And AC Pune City, in my opinion, has done a fantastic job when it comes to developing young players and also in terms of their operations. They're pretty solid. So I hope they stick around and I hope they get out of this mess that they are in right now. The final one for this episode is from Swapnonil Acharya. He says, I want all the I-League official clubs to join me and ask AIFF to keep Lajong in the I-League. 
They were without foreign players, just like the Indian Arrows. And just think of the Arrows' journey in 2011. They were winless. Please give Lejong a chance to fight back. Swapnil, even though your tweet wasn't engaged with enough, but I think you got this absolutely spot on. Lejong is a club that's done wonderful things for Indian football, especially when it comes to youth development. There are rumours that they're going to shut shop as a club and only remain an academy, which in my opinion is a pity because Shillong Lejong is an excellent club, a legacy club in Indian football that I would love to see in the ISL. Well guys, that's it for this episode of Half Folly. I hope you enjoyed it. We're into episode 4 now, so I hope you're liking what you're doing. If you're not, leave it in the comments down below. Tell us what we should improve upon or something that we should add to the show. Uh, we'll make sure that happens. Till the next time, I've been Ankur Sharma. You're watching Super Football, the home of Indian football fans. And I'll see you in the next video.